Right, I was in two different places. Um, yes, you can hear me now. Good, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Stephen. Take it away. Sure. So I'm going to try sharing my screen. If it goes wrong, then um, then let me know, and I will stop sharing the screen again and just talk. Um, so yes, I'm just going to share one tab though, which might be which might be better. Okay. Can everyone still hear me? Good. Um, so we're going to talk about working at Docker, uh, which is slightly different from the things we've we've been talking about up till now, which has been more about technology. Um, but the reason we wanted to talk about that is because we're hiring. Uh, so yes, we um, we've been talking about some of the some of the cool things we're doing. Uh, we've been um, you, you've you've seen some of the uh, Docker desktop stuff. We've got a lot of, lot of other stuff going on and we want to bring you more stuff we want to bring you stuff faster and so to do that we need more people and we're growing the company and looking for more people to join us and we thought we're a better place to look than on our community we know we've got a lot of um we know we've got a lot of talented people here people with lots of lots of different talents and we know we've got a lot of docker fans uh so um, if that sounds like you, and if you might be interested in actually coming and coming and working with us and, and building the next set of Docker tools, then um, yes, please uh, please uh, think about applying. So let me talk about what positions we've got. Um, sorry. Um, yes, so we've got um, well, actually, pretty much all our departments are hiring right now because we are we are growing quite fast. But let's start with software development. So one of the nice things about about Docker is that we've got really quite a large software stack. We've got everything from um, operating system up to UI. Basically, we've got um, at the bottom we've got the kind of um, Docker engine and the virtualization layer that that I was talking about in the in the Docker desktop talk before. Uh, we've got the um, back-end applications, we've got full stack positions, we've got front-end like UI JavaScript positions. Uh, we develop on, we develop CLI programs, we develop desktop apps, we develop web apps, we work on Mac and Windows and Linux. So we've got a really quite wide variety of, of engineering roles. Uh, if, if any of those match what you do, then we may well have a, have a position for you. Um, we're also looking for product managers and product designers. I think one of the nice things about the way we work at Docker, which is is not something I've encountered in, in previous jobs I've worked in, is we have um, a really high ratio of product managers and product designers to engineers. We have, in fact, every scrum team has a product manager and a product designer embedded in it. So that's how we make sure we're building what, what you, our users want, and it makes sure we we continue to build it in a kind of um, intuitive, friendly, uh, simple way that is usable. Uh, so yeah, as we grow the number of engineers, we need more product managers, more product designers as well. Uh, we need sustaining engineers, we need data engineers, we need engineering managers. As we get more engineers, we'll need more managers as well. Um, and yeah, so those are the positions in kind of product and development, which is probably um, probably most of what um, most of what people on this call are interested in. We also have um, positions in our other departments, though. So if you happen to be in sales or marketing or HR or finance or anything like that, or if you have friends who are who might be looking for a job, uh, those departments are hiring as well. Um, Eduardo, a sustaining engineer is kind of a very technical support engineer, someone who takes support questions but can also um, dig into the code and, and understand what the user's problem is. Um, so uh, next slide. So yes, where are we hiring? So it's not actually everywhere. So all our positions are remote. We all work from home now. Uh, we used to have offices. We closed them at the beginning of the pandemic. And then we discovered that actually remote working works really well for us. And so we're going to continue that. We're not going back to the offices. Um, however, there are only certain countries we can hire in at the moment. They're the ones shown on the on the maps and the, and the lists here. Um, unfortunately, those are the only countries in which we actually can pay people at the moment. So um, apologies if you're in one of the other countries. Um, but if you're in one of these countries that's, uh, that's colored in on these maps, those are the countries that we're, we're looking for. 
Um, I thought at this point I would um, talk to some of some of my colleagues and find out um, find out more about what they do at Docker and what their experience of working at Docker is. And so, um, if they, if you, uh, um, have we got the other the other three people here? We're going to start with Anka again if she's there. Anka, have you recovered from your? Have you recovered from your internet problems? Uh, hi, can you hear me now? We can hear you. I think it was when you were sharing your screen, Anchor. It worked really, it worked really perfectly until you shared your screen, and then it just cut out. So, oh, I don't. Know sorry. That, but um, yes, it might have been because you were sharing the tab that had the thing itself, and it was going all recursive. I don't know what happened, but anyway, we can hear you perfectly now. Okay, um, thank you. So, um, um, yes. Um, so why don't you start, Anka, and tell us? Well, you told us a little bit about what you do, but tell us again, and tell us, um, tell us what, how you, how you find working with working in Docker, and uh, yeah, what you like about it. Sure. Uh, so hello again. <laughs> Sorry for the previous session. Um, so as I mentioned before, I'm uh, an engineer at Docker, uh, working on uh, currently on the Docker desktop uh, backend. Well, mostly on Docker desktop for Linux. This is my current focus. Um, what can I tell you about my background? Well, I joined Docker two years and a few months ago. Uh, and actually before joining, I haven't used, uh, I haven't been working on container technology. So I was, I was a complete beginner, uh, when I started. So, uh, basically uh, then joining Docker, starting to work on the, the open source tools, Docker compose, uh, I, in two years, I've learned tremendous uh, things about uh, container technologies, how to uh, optimize my applications, uh, it's either structure or, or build time. And it, it's been uh, an amazing period. Um, the engineering group has helped a lot. I, sometimes I think I'm very annoying because I get stuck uh on things uh, quite often so i need to bug my uh, my colleagues can you help me with this or uh just tell me what's not uh if they can identify a, a problem or describe me some sort of process uh, the process that uh, just to get uh, just to understand it better so um i think that from uh from a personal view i've I've been growing as an engineer and I'm becoming better and hopefully we'll continue this growth. Uh, we'll, we are, I'm going to this continuously. Um, also, what I like a lot uh, is the, the work environment, the team. Uh, there is a lot of uh, knowledge sharing between uh, engineers uh, and it's not only within the, the engineering group, but there is a lot of com very good communication with the Docker community, which uh, it's amazing. And it for me, it has been the first time working on tools that are uh, being used by a very large number. Uh, they have a, a large uh, user base. And every, every line of code that we commit to can have a huge impact. So uh, it, it was a change and it's, it's really that motivates you to build uh, new features and to ship new, new tools. Because uh, we actually uh, are fixing some real uh, issues that our users have. So uh, it, it has been really uh, a joy to, to work uh, for these two, two years uh, in Docker. Um, what can I say more? Um, also, it's not only from a technological point of view that we are getting, uh, as an engineer, I'm getting better at understanding the tools, what is happening behind the hood. Uh, there are also, uh, there is also the fact that uh, your work, whatever you're working on, it's quite visible uh in the sense that we are sharing whatever we are uh the progress that we are doing on our current uh, uh piece of work we are sharing with uh, within our engineering group and uh you get feedback on it uh, right away 
and then we, we we can also share it within uh, the docker community and that's the response is amazing sometimes you you get feedback and you get to actually learn more about how different tools can be used and how people different use cases uh, that uh, uh, developers can use our tools for and uh, it's been an, a, a very an, an amazing journey for me um, so uh, what can I say? I think this is one, uh, for me as an engineer, uh, it's one of the things that motivate me to, to work, uh, to create new stuff. Uh, having uh, good people, uh, good feedback and uh, seeing people really enjoying what you're working and giving you feedback, telling you how can you, uh, what are the issues that they, uh, they meet and, uh, it's it's really uh, I'm enthusiastic about it. <laughs> so <laughs> I think this is mostly I have I had a very good experience and I will continue to do so. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anka. Um, Mark, you want to go next? Sure. Can you hear me? Yep. Awesome. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mark. Um, I work as a front end developer on the content team here at Docker. Uh, which means I develop the user interfaces of Docker Hub and Docker Desktop. Um, my my Docker story started in autumn of last year um, when I when I saw a LinkedIn advert and I applied. Um, I didn't have much in the way of expectations. I wouldn't have been surprised if I had just never heard back, um, but I did. I within a few days, a hiring manager got in touch. Um, I had a few interest, a few very fun interviews with some cool, interesting people, um, and then uh, within about uh, two weeks of me applying, um, I had an offer, um, and then it all started to get very real, right? Like, um, uh, especially when I was told that I would be the only uh, the only developer on on Docker Hub within Europe, uh, which I still am. Which all of you can change if you if you head to our careers page and look for the front end position in the content team. Um, but yeah, I, I felt. I kind of, kind of, uh, a little bit scared. I thought everyone at Docker must be just so smart, um, and I was right. Everyone is, but I've, I've worked places before where, like, being around smart people kind of makes you feel dumber. Um, but being in Docker, being around smart people makes you feel smarter, and it makes you actually be smarter because uh, there's, there's this amazing culture of humility and cooperation and investment in each other's success. Um, everyone's. I was excited to learn uh, to to share the things they know, help each other learn things, get, help each other get over the the hurdles that we're that we're facing, um, and it creates this great spirit of kind of psychological safety, where it's okay to be wrong, it's okay to not be perfect, it's okay to ask questions, it's okay to disagree with people, um, and it really helps me be my best as a developer. I don't. I've never felt like a better developer than when I've been at Docker. Um, so an average day for me would be, I, I, I might run uh, sync sessions with my fellow developers where we'll chat through interesting problems together and collaboratively solve things. Um, I might have meetings with, uh, product managers, the kind of people that in a, in a, in a bigger organization, you might never meet, um, because there'll be like a chain of seven people between you and them. Um, but in Docker, I can, I can put something into their calendar and just have a chat. Uh, about upcoming features, um, and then most importantly, I just I, I build cool stuff. You know, I, I build stuff that my fellow engineers use, that they rely on. I have colleagues from uh, from places I've worked in the past who message me saying, "Hey, Mark, could you could you get this thing on the roadmap? Could you could you push this feature? Could you tweak this thing?" Um, because Docker is so important to us; it's it's so integral to what we do, um, and it just makes me feel like the coolest person in the world. Um, so if you want to feel like the coolest person in the world as well, then again, I, I, I wholeheartedly recommend you head to the, the careers page, um, have a look at the uh, uh, opportunities on the content team. And I would, I would love to, to meet some of you and speak with you and maybe work with you in the future. Thanks very much. Mark has, has on a mission, something is called tiny wins. Like every sprint, he will fix one annoyance in either Docker Hub or Docker Desktop some like really just little bit of UI, which we might not bother to fix. And Mark is on a mission to clear up all the annoyances, which is really, is really good. We really value that, Mark. 
yeah, just make every every developer's life a little bit better. That's right, a little bit better every 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 two weeks. That's great. Um, so Steph, yeah, tell us uh, tell us where you're from, what you do, what you like about Docker. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, so those are those are hard acts to follow, but um, I'm I'm Steph Rafai. Um, I'm a product manager based in the U.S. Um, I'm actually in Washington D.C. and I've been at Docker for about six months, um, and they've been really awesome months. Um, so I work on the Interloop team, which is all about local experience. So Docker CLI, Docker Dashboard, Docker Compose, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot of things. <laughs> it was hard to kind of narrow down the things that I love about working here. But um, I, I wanted to start with just like, I love working on the tooling that we work on because literally every day, all day, like I'm doing it right now, <laughs> I work and use things that developers make um, and it makes my life so much easier. It makes my life so much better. And so it's so cool to me to be able to contribute to something that is maybe making a developer's life better in some way, because I, like I, I have countless millions of developers to thank for like so much that I do. Um, so just like within that, one of the amazing things about this company is just how much that we value and it's within the company culture to like really value the user's feedback, everybody's user feedback and the community and really listening. And we're not afraid to, to be put something out there and be wrong and be like, okay, you know what? Maybe that wasn't, wasn't the right direction. We're going to course correct. We're going to change our minds. We're going to learn. Um, and really it's like customer feedback and user feedback that helps us do that um, and make sure that we're, we're staying on track and nothing gets out um, before we've talked to a user about it, before we've kind of seen um, some, in, some people bring it up in issues or the roadmap or in, in like the feedback that you give us um, in like surveys and things like that. And so it's just really at the core of the company to, to value that. Um, and then like, the other thing just to echo what everybody else has already said is the people here just um they are amazing i have everyone at every level at this company just values and really exemplifies just curiosity humility and, and collaboration i feel like i'm never afraid to share uh, like i my background is in in stats i've never been a developer and i i'm not afraid to ask really silly questions to developers and and put out ideas that um, people challenge or, or are curious about. And, and it's just like so collaborative and, and awesome. Um, but there's also like a lot of laughs too <laughs> along the way and, and we have a good time. Um, and I feel very, very like genuinely excited to, to learn and work with the people that are here, which is really awesome. Um, and then the last thing I'll talk about is, is just the leadership. I, the leadership really invests and cares about the people who work here and they hear our feedback. It's so obvious that they're listening to us, that they're making changes. They do it in such a transparent way. And they're also like, they also exemplify like, you know what, that maybe I was wrong. That humility of like, you know, we're going to, we're going to change or we're going to uh, try again. And I think that's something in my experience that's really really special to have have uh, leadership that really invests in you and, and really cares about about your well-being. Um, and so, yeah, I, I to summarize, love working here um, and I, I would love to have you here. So check us out. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Steph. That's awesome. Thank you, all three of you. Um, I have got one more slide. Uh, let me share my screen again if I can do that. Okay, so uh, yes. So what what um, what benefits do we provide to our employees? Um, one, uh, and it's, it seems maybe it seems strange to put this as the first one because it's uh, kind of most people wouldn't list this among their among their benefits. Um, but freedom and flexibility, and this is this is very important to us. Uh, so as I said, we all work from home, and we want people to be able to have the benefits of working from home. And part of that is a good work-life balance. We want people to be able to fit their work around their life. Um, well, let me let me just take one example. So myself, I I tend to start work a bit early. I finish a bit late, and I take a, I take 
uh, time out in the middle of the day to go for a 30 kilometer cycle ride every day. Uh, so I fit my work around my exercise. Um, other people fit their work around, I don't know, social activity or um, childcare arrangements or, um, or something like that. So yeah, we want people to have a good work-life balance and we want people to arrange their work how they like. We trust people to get the work done and, and we, we trust people to organize their time. Um, competitive salary, we believe, we believe our salaries are, are, are competitive. Um, we also give uh, everybody stock options. So we're a growing startup. We want everybody to um, have a stake in the uh, success of the business and to share in the success of the business. Social events. So yes, we have a we have a variety of social events, and this is actually even more important to us since we since we shut the offices. Uh, we want people to be able to uh, meet each other both virtually and when at least when we're allowed to meet in person. Um, we believe it's important that to get to know your colleagues personally as well as professionally. We think that if you if you know people and if you're working with people that you like, then you do better work together as well. And so we have uh, social events for individual teams, for um, uh, lo local areas or countries, and whole company events. Some of them, some of them are on Zoom at the moment. At the moment, more of them are on Zoom. Some of them are in person. Um, but yes, we um, we we believe in in building connections with each other and and having fun together as well. Uh, home office setup. So yes, we want you to be um, we want you to be comfortable. Uh, while you work, uh, we want you to be safe, and um, so it's not. We, we obviously we'll give you a, give you a computer, but it's not just uh, it's not just a computer. If you need a, if you haven't got a good desk, if you haven't got a, a good quality office chair, if you haven't got um, if you need a new headset, uh, something like that, we'll we'll just supply those things. And in addition to that, we have a working from home allowance, which is. Um, it's $100 per month per employee. We just give a, a flat rate. Uh, and this is to uh, basically fund your internet and phone bill at home. If you're working from home, we believe we should, we should pay that for you. Uh, vacation plan that encourages you to take time off, it says. Yes, yeah, so um, we don't want people burning out. Uh, that doesn't help anybody. Uh, we want people to have time off. We give, we give, um, plenty of vacation time. Uh, we encourage people to take it and not to just lose it. And we um, we want people to go away. We want people to have uh, have time to do the things they enjoy and to um, come back refreshed. And in addition to the regular time off, we've got something else which we've just started, which we call wellness days. Um, sorry, it's a terrible pun. There are loads of terrible whale puns in Docker. If you, if you don't like whale puns, Docker is not the place for you. Um, but wellness days, um, they are a company-wide day off each month. So one day every month, the whole company shuts down and everybody takes a day off. And this is um, this helps people get a, well said, Stephen, thank you, Jeremy. Um, we, um, this helps people uh, get a good work-life balance. And oh, I shouldn't have said anything. The chat is getting full of whale puns now. Um, so yeah, the advantage of this is everybody takes the same day off every or off at the same time so you don't come back and find you've got a pile of email and a pile of things which other people have been uh, have been uh, waiting for you to do because everybody else was off yesterday as well um so yeah and that's in addition to the the normal allocation of vacation time which you can take um so uh what else do we have maternity and paternity leave um health insurance um I didn't mention Docker swag. Like we get loads of Docker swag, like T-shirts and uh, and hoodies and uh, and um, what else? Mugs and oh, like last month, in fact, we all got a Docker branded popcorn maker. That was quite cute. Um, so yes, yeah, so these 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 are the benefits. So I haven't. Um, they're they're not exactly the same in every country. Um, there's dependencies according to local uh, local laws and local customs. Um, but these are they're broadly the same in every country. They're they're kind of as close as as close as we can make it. Um, and, then, and and yeah, they're in these categories. If you want to know the if you want to know the exact numbers, then um, then uh, you can come and talk to us, and we'll uh, we can give you more details. Um, sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. 
Uh, yes, so um, to wrap up, how do you find out more? So you can come to our uh, careers page on our website, docker.com slash careers, and um, you'll find a list of all the uh, jobs we've got open at the moment. Um, come back in a month as well and find some more because as I say, we're, we're continuing to grow. A couple of the jobs I mentioned are not advertised right now, but are going to be advertised imminently. Most of them are available now though. You can find them on our careers site. You can find out more information and you can, um, and you can um, um, apply there as well. Uh, alternatively, uh, if you go to the networking channel straight after this talk, then we will be hanging out in there. We've also got um, we've also got our head of recruitment. Uh, Bree is I can see her chatting on the chat as well, but she's also going to be in the in the networking channel. Uh, there's a there's a job fair area in there that you can come and talk to us if you want to find out more details. And uh, yes, so hopefully um, hopefully we can have some of you come and join us as as colleagues in the coming months. So that's all I had for that talk. Um, I think uh, Anka's talk we are going to record and publish on our YouTube channel and on our uh, community Slack. So um, if you want to learn about Awesome Compose, which is awesome, um, you can have a chance to catch up on that. Or you can, of course, go to the Awesome Compose repository and find all our cool Compose samples. Um, apart from that, uh, so the uh, parallel tracks are... Um, I was just seeing if there's any questions here that I could answer first. Um, time zone, most meetings held. So um, most, almost all our scrum teams are in either, you are, are based either in Europe or in the Americas. We, there's a couple of exceptions, but we try to concentrate them in one or other of those regions for, for time zone reasons. So does that answer your question, AO? Um, whole company events are kind of held early morning Pacific, um, um, lunchtime Eastern and uh, and uh, kind of late afternoon, early evening in, in Europe. Um, yeah, so we've got parallel tracks starting in seven minutes, I believe. And we've also got the networking area with some um, uh, parallel uh, language sessions. So you can look at the you can you can look at the agenda, you can join any of the any of the channels where there's going to be parallel tracks. And uh, yeah, as I say, I'll be in the um, job fair in the networking area and you can come and talk, talk to us in there. Uh, thank you for joining everybody. And uh, yeah, hope you can join some of the uh, some of the talks for the next hour.